So, so today we're going to be doing a quick astrological update on Bitcoin and some quick technical analysis. So right now, what happened with the price of Bitcoin is we see that we broke out of this um, ascending wedge and we were planning on retesting this trend line right here. But obviously things didn't hold. Um, this is the four hour chart. So if I remove this arrow right here, we see that this candle ended up, you know, touching it just above and, you know, coming back a little bit. But the next one, we got dumped. <clears throat> and this big dump happened last week. So if we go on the weekly charts and perhaps we hide all the the drawings we see this anomaly we see this huge you know unexpected candle to the downside and um this may be having to do with the fact that last week was the 33rd week of the year um and 33 is a number associated with the freemasons and with the occult so the those that participate in market manipulation they love to do rituals by certain numbers and codes and so i just want to shout out to waters above crypto for that observation of the 33rd week of the year and he even like called this this dump you know and when he's when he you know made a video talking about it which his videos revolve around the numerology and and crypto um, so he talks about numbers, dates, and stuff like that. And when he talked about that, you know, I definitely took some action to de-risk my position. And sure enough, that week we had this huge like dump. Um, so this was a huge anomaly. And, you know, earlier we were projecting twenty-seven to $28,000 Bitcoin. And a continuation of the uptrend, which was very reasonable. But now we are forced to consider, you know, alternatives and we have to rethink our our expectations at this time because now we're at low, lower levels. So we're in new circumstances. And now uh, we're going to talk about, you know, what can we expect next or like what's the forecasted moves? And that's the thing that happens a lot with the markets is that things change, like circumstances change very quickly. And you have to discard old ideas quickly. And even when it comes to trading, that's what the concept of a stop loss is about. When you buy some coins with the expectation of making money, you also want to put in a order, a stop loss order, which will sell your position if things don't go in your favor after it reaches a certain level. Like you have to you have to set a limit to how much losses that you're willing to take. You can't just keep hoping. Um because when it comes to trading, it's about circumstances. It's about like being in the present and taking what the market gives you. And so okay, we're we're kind of going on a tangent here, but the last thing I'll say about this is that when it comes to trading, um some advice that I would give that is major is that Never, never be in a position of hoping that the market does something or waiting for it to do something. As soon as you're taking a trade and you're in a position where you're hoping for the market to do something, like you're already losing. You're on the wrong side of the trade, my friend. And that's the mistake a lot of people make. The most ideal situations is where, where you can catch, you know, lows. You can catch a wick. And then the price moves up. So, for example, if you're somebody that had bought down here in Bitcoin, you know, at this point, you're already in profit. You're no longer waiting. But the word like you're not you're not waiting for the market to do anything like you have what you put in. You have the value that you already invested and more. This is the situation that every trader needs to be looking to get into. And the mistake that a lot of beginner trader traders may make or people that want to trade and make money is like making a bunch of trades, making a bunch of decisions, hoping to make money, but not, you know, but getting themselves in a bunch of situations where they're just waiting for the market to do something else. You know, you want to be patient and smart and, and, and minimize the amount of times um, 
ideally to like zero to to a minimum that you're waiting for the market to do something because now you're at a position of risk and you're just at a loss you're on the wrong side of the trade ideally you shouldn't be buying right here ideally you should be buying right here but of course right now that's not possible you see what i mean but anyway that's just some random trading advice that might help those that you know think about the concept of making money and once you have that knowledge once you have that understanding like you're already off to like a good start when it comes to trading like if you're never in a position where you're hoping for the market to do something you're doing damn good you know and so hopefully that encourages or helps you guys start you know trying to you know trade you know different things like stocks and cryptocurrencies and make money off that because um, a lot of people may you know think that it's hard or may be reluctant to get out to get into it because of risk but um, there is no risk if you're not waiting for it, stuff to do stuff. If if you're already bought at a low level and the thing has increased, you're no longer in a position of, of risk, you know, from where you were. But anyway, in this video, we're going to be talking about where we expect Bitcoin to move next and Ethereum, especially in this video. So furthermore, um, the main topic was that last week was the 33rd week of the year and we ha just had this huge anomaly and we see the price literally come to about the same price level as the previous low but it's like a little bit higher technically speaking the lows that we hit last week were twenty thousand um hold on let's let's zoom in more specifically and look in the top left we see l on the top in the top middle of the screen l is at twenty thousand seven hundred seventy about whereas this wick was at this uh red wick which I'm highlighting was at 20,700. So there's about a $60 differential between these lows, but it's technically a higher low from here. So this is technically can be considered, you know, still an uptrend, but it's very tight. And at this point, we should be changing our expectations, like, and at this point, we're in a new circumstance where things could be taking a turn towards a reversal. And, and if you think about it, and if you consider these lows right here, because we see this little bit of a cup and handle formation that was forming, which likely would have, you know, led us to the 27,000 range that we were anticipating, and that a lot of people were anticipating, but that, you know, got demolished by this uh, manipulation and this liquidation event of last week. Well, then, um, if we consider these as lows, we're technically at a lower low. And lower lows just mean the start of a downtrend. Lower low means we can reasonably anticipate a lower high. So at this point, we got to figure out or try to understand what what that could be like what's a good level for us to to anticipate now instead of 2500 so if i make the fib levels more clear and i apply a different template to them one that shows the golden pocket which is between the 618 level and the 786 um Anywhere within the golden pocket is typically a good place to take profits within a trading range. And right now the trading range that we have is from 25,000 to the lows of June, which were 17,000. So with that being said, given that we project a lower high, you know, this, this is a pretty reasonable trading range. So anything within the golden pocket is safe levels to de-risk. And, uh, you know, any one of these levels would be a good time to de-risk. So 22,300, 23,000 is a great level to de-risk because, again, you never know, like, what people are going to decide. You know, when we, when we try to predict the markets and when we try to predict price, we're really trying to predict human behavior. We're really trying to predict, like, what people are basically going to do. So... In reality, we all know that nobody knows what people are going to do from circumstance to circumstance. But what I can see with the astrology is the energy of the coins. I can see the energy, the astrology, like 
the value around the coin. And that's like based on the planets and the transits that are happening to it. And with that, we've been able to predict like multiple events, multiple rallies, multiple opportunities financially, where we see how people are going to perceive the coin. And that gives us a reasonable expectation of how like the price will move as well. But again, human behavior is unpredictable. So at 23,000 is a good level to, to de-risk. And then at the top of the golden ratio, 23,600 as well. Um, so uh, with that being said, right now we're making a W formation and I have the neckline designated here. Um, it's at 21,776. So the neckline of a, of a W pattern, which is a bullish pattern, meaning like it forecasts an uh, increase in price, especially when the neckline is broken by a candle, which we haven't yet on the four hour chart, but which is a likely possibility because Ethereum, as we will see, has has already completed its, its W breakout. Um, but the neckline would be perhaps above this candle or you could say, you know, at this wick right here. Uh, 20, 21,800. And so if we get a candle above this and then a pullback and then we get a second candle higher than that, this confirms the pattern. And the measured move or the anticipated gains that we can make from that would be measured from the bottom, uh, the, the, the swing lows to the, to the neckline. And this is a pattern that traders use to forecast you know, anticipated price. So around 23,000, since you know, crypto tends to be more volatile, it can make a larger move. So it's likely going to touch 23,000 at least. That is a reasonable expectation or a reasonable, you know, push that this trend line could, uh, I mean, this W pattern can give us at this time. And we know with the new moon in Virgo coming up on the 27th of August, which brings bullish energy to the market um, and to cryptocurrencies, that we have astrological confirmation for a move upwards. So from this move downwards of last week, from this anomaly that we had on the 33rd week, which was manipulated in a way, it was, you know, planned, it was it was foreseeable. In fact, Waters Above Crypto, a YouTuber, you know, for, foresaw this movement. Like based on that, like we should we should be expecting a little bit of a turnaround, a, a correction from this anomaly of a week that we were having that really ruined our, you know, our uptrend, you know, our 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 conceptualization of what was really going on. Um, but again, unexpected events happen. And that was something nobody could really have for, forecasted. Um, but anyways, so given that we have this bullish energy towards the new moon, we have this W pattern acting as further like confirmation or as a further sign of a bullish opportunity. 23,000 would be a relatively reasonable level to expect us to retest next. Um, so with that being said, join the Patreon and if you would like to see more astrology content because I will be talking about the lunar return of Bitcoin that's coming up next and what that means for the markets. Um, the lunar return has the ascendant in Capricorn and we'll talk about what that means and that's happening on the 11th of September 9-11 so this is a major upcoming astrological transit and so anyways after 23,000 there's going to be another prediction basically based on that which I already have lined up um, and on Patreon you know we've made several accurate calls um, in a row and this this weekly, uh, this 33rd week, you know, invalidated one of our expectations, which was the 28,000 Bitcoin, at least for the time being. Again, circumstances change and the market is all about adapting cir to circumstances. So it can be very fickle. And a lot of times you can find yourself contradicting your previous expectations. But if you can get over that hump and you can just capitalize on the present moment, that's what trading is really about and not get attached to previous hopes and dreams because that's how you basically get shaked out that's how you 
get on the wrong side of a trade. You got to quickly cut your losses sometimes. That's what stop losses are about. Um, but with that being said, like um, 23,000 is a reasonable level to expect. Like if we confirm this um, W pattern and what we'll need to see is an increase of volume. An increase of volume on these four hour candles on at least one of them and a, a closure above this neckline and then perhaps a second closure above that and this is you know confirming the uptrend so uh now let's talk about ethereum because there's a lot to say about that ethereum has already completed its w breakout and something about ethereum that i noticed and that everybody probably noticed is just how bullish it is at this moment like it is so full of energy it just always wants to move up like there's so much pressure there's so much demand for it for it to move up and so we see that before even bitcoin has even retest retested the neckline ethereum has already recently made its closures earlier today and made a second candle above it and I bought in right about at the neckline. I had some orders in and I've set my stop losses just a little bit below the neckline. And my take profits around this 1750 level because I projected, you know, from swing lows to, to the neckline, it takes us to about 1750. So that's a reasonable expectation to have with Ethereum into this new moon in Virgo if, you know, Bitcoin rallies up to 23,000 as well. In fact, I believe like, 1750 may be on the low end of things because ethereum is going to really go ham <laughs> like if bitcoin goes to 20 if bitcoin goes to 23,000 um within the next week or two um so with that being said though um in terms of ethereum was there anything else oh one of the major things to keep in mind with ethereum and I guess like this green box is another thing that I forgot to mention. This might be a good take profit range. Um, but espe especially around the 786, which is the top of the golden ratio. And technically, Ethereum retested the 618. It didn't even come back to the 0.5 ratio, which is about 50% 50, 50 of a correction. 0.5 means 50%. So Bitcoin, though, we see came back to the 0.5 you know, Fibonacci level in this trading range between 25,000 and 17,000. But at, as long or not as long as, but given the fact that we closed a weekly above the 0.5, this is bullish or like this gives us continuous, uh, continuity or like continu continuation on this, um, this expectation or this uh, hope of of a um, continued move upwards because 0.5 means being above the top, being in the top 50% of a trading range. So if the closure of last week, the 33rd week had been below the 0.5, that would have been a really bearish signal. That means we're in the bottom 50% of the trading range. But if we're literally holding the upper 50%, of the trading range as support, you know, that means we're in upwards, like levels of price at this time. Um, and we're still making moves in the upper half of the trading range. So 0.5 means just upper half. Um, but we see that Bitcoin retested the 0.5, whereas Ethereum, as I was saying, it only retested the 618. So again, it's, it's a lot more bullish at this time. And that is the bottom of the golden pocket. So Ethereum is technically still in the golden pocket. It's uh, within this trading range. It's still at reasonable selling like levels, especially in the long term, especially the possibility of, you know, a continued bear market in the coming weeks and months. Um, Ethereum is definitely due for a large correction at some point. But right now, the bullishness is still on with it. And... Um, you know, we're soon approaching the 702. But what I was trying to say is that with Bitcoin, it was reasonable to expect the 702. 
we'd be lucky to see the 786. But with Ethereum, I feel like the reasonable price to expect if Bitcoin moves to 23,000 is technically speaking the this trend uh this downwards dash trend line that we see. Um which is based on the four hour charts. So I apologize if this is a little bit confusing. I think I'm gonna remove certain elements or at least make them more dim. Such as, you know, this red trend line, which we already broke. But um, as we can see, there's like this trend line that a few weeks were touching after this two thousand dollar level, so with this W breakout and the expected move coming close to that, I feel like this trend line would may act as a level of resistance. Um. So that is my current analysis. That's as far as I'm gonna go with this. If we do end up breaking this trend line, it might actually turn as temporary support, but. I don't see as like I don't see it as a major trend line. I feel like the main thing to expect though, or like the main projection, given we're more in bullish energy at this time towards the new moon, is maybe this seven eight six, and if Bitcoin hits twenty three thousand, I feel like Ethereum could literally hit up to nineteen hundred, and that would be a great place to de-risk, take profits, and whatnot, especially in hindsight. So that is my daily update on the crypto markets i hope you guys enjoyed and if you love astrology and esoteric knowledge and you love cryptocurrencies and you'd like to see the combination of those two um then my patreon is the place to be because we analyze lunar returns and charts of cryptos in order to make predictions and so far it's been an amazing tool and we've made a lot of accurate predictions in the past and we'll continue to do so. Um, and so if you're into financial opportunities and you want to make a little extra money trading and you're into astrology, then that is the place to be. So I hope to see you guys in another video sometime soon. And I'll see um, a lot of you guys on Patreon as well that decide to come over there. Uh, but with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. So I'll talk to you guys sometime soon. Peace.